Art Responding to a Nation in Crisis. We welcome you virtually to LAU New York and uh, for everyone tuning in, uh, wherever you are, uh, welcome. And we're so glad that you're with us. <clears throat> I'd like to introduce uh, our moderator for today, Sultan al Qasimi, who is the founder of Bajil Art Foundation and also uh, teaches at Boston College. Uh, I was lucky enough to see one of uh, his uh, last uh, cur uh, creations, the exhibit uh, Taking Shape, Abstractions from the Arab World. I actually was able to see it live at the NYU Gray Gallery shortly before uh, the uh, global lockdown. And it reminds me um, how much things have changed over this uh, past year uh, for the world uh, and in particular for the arts and uh, those that look to uh, our spectator of the arts like myself and of course those that are creating the art that we all enjoy. Uh, having said that, I will hand over right now to Sultan. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Nadia. Thank you everybody for joining us, wherever you are. Um, hello and welcome to this session of uh, Art Responding to a National Crisis hosted by the Lebanese American University, both campuses actually here in New York and Lebanon. We have uh, two great, uh, not only artists, but, uh, but uh, art practitioners and art actors from the region, Lamia Jurej and Haniba al Suruji, who will be speaking today on the challenges that are facing the future of Lebanon's art scene. And I think also the art scene in general, not only in the Middle East, but also in the world. This is a community in Lebanon that has persevered despite the harrowing setbacks it has faced in the past years, ranging from conflict to economic and currency crisis to the consequences of the very tragic explosion in Beirut in August of last year. And I believe today is the sixth anniversary of that explosion. And of course, you not know, to forget the disturbing news that we have received today, is just another reminder of this uh, continuous uh, cycle that the Lebanese community, the arts community is facing. These are incredibly trying times uh, that left many in a state of uncertainty. Today, though, we will uh, discuss the response of the art scene to the ongoing crises, its remarkable resiliency and consider ways of thinking about a more sustainable future. What is the responsibility of the private sector in this situation? What are the responsibilities of institutions and regional partners who benefit from Lebanon's arts uh, community encountering the adversities facing the country? Uh, how can we imagine a working ecosystem together and act towards greater stability and safety for the arts in the region? I also, before starting, want to thank uh, the, the wonderful team at LAU who has brought this event together, Nadia Maghdashi, who's with us, Elida Jbaili, Albert uh, Dumar, and Nadim Shahadi, uh, and now introducing our two uh, speakers. And this is going to be a very uh, casual conversation. So I feel like all of us will be participating and we count on you as well to be taking part in this event. But joining us, we have Hannibal Suruji, uh, who was born in Lebanon in 1957, lives and works between Beirut and Paris, holds a master's in fine arts from Concordia University in Canada, and has held different teaching positions at universities in the US, Canada, as well as the Sorbonne in Paris, uh, before joining the LAU in 2010, uh, where he holds today the position of chairperson of the arts and design department as associate professor of practice at the School of Architecture and Design. Plenty, plenty, plenty to talk to Anibal uh, Suruji, but also equally plenty to talk uh, with um, Lamia Jurej, who was born in Lebanon in 1972, the visual artist and filmmaker who lives and works in Beirut and earned her BFA from the Rhode Island School of Design, uh, where she studied painting and filmmaking. She uses archival documents and elements of fiction to reflect on history and its possible narration and on the relationship between individual stories and collective memory and her practice rooted in her country's experience. She explores the possibilities of representing the Lebanese wars and their aftermath. I mean, uh, it's plenty to talk about, as I said, of course, not to forget her role at the BAC uh, as a founder and uh, so, so much really in between. These are not just artists uh, or art actors, it's so much more to talk about. Uh, reminder, please type your questions 
in the chat. We will be answering them from the very beginning. So we'll not be leaving everything to the end. But I think I want to begin with Lemia, who I introduced second. Uh, Lemia, uh, first of all, I believe uh, we wanted to mark a solemn occasion uh, or a solemn uh, event that happened today. So maybe we begin with that uh, before I uh, jump into questions. Yes, first, uh, thank you for, uh, thank you to LAU for inviting us to, to this panel. And um, I, I just wanted to pay tribute to the memory of Lokman Slim, who was assassinated today, and, um, and uh, whose contribution to the cultural landscape was uh, in Lebanon was very, very important. And today is a very sad day. It's, uh, it's strange and sad to, to have this uh, panel uh, on, such a, on, such a, on such a sad day. Um, voilà. Thank you, thank you, Damia. Uh, Hannibal, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, I'm, I'm very sorry for the family and for all of us. I think uh, this is a loss for Lebanon. Uh, I mean, uh, assassinating, assassinating uh, individuals and uh, especially intellectuals in Lebanon is like projecting me back in the in time. I mean, I thought we had, were over it, but like now we cannot even think and say we don't have the freedom to say what we want and this is terrible for uh, for all of us i think it's a terrible event yes uh, may he rest in peace and our condolences uh, to the family uh, of, course. of course um yes thank you so much uh, both Tanya and hannibal for your kind words uh, i think we can start now by the way there's plenty of questions already coming into the chat so i probably will be dipping into them in a, a few minutes uh, let me uh, and Hannibal, but maybe let me, if I can begin uh, with you. Uh, as I mentioned in the introduction, you use a lot of archival documents in your work, whether it's photographs, videos, or other types of media uh, to reflect on uh, history and also on the ways that history is constructed and told. Why do you think historical documents are important and how can they help us build meaningful links between the individual and the collective? Yes, I've, I've, um, I've used a lot of archive documents that uh, were often from, from my personal, from the family, but I've also uh, created documents by recording testimonies, uh, for instance, in projects like Objects of War or here and perhaps elsewhere. And um, um, of course, the, I mean, the first thing is that archive or documents contained um, uh, traces and uh, important tra historical traces that are, they carry um, the weight of time within them materially, but also immaterially. Uh, they have an aura, of course, that is beyond the materiality and the physicality of, of, of it. But one could say they are relics and they are also a witness. Um, so whether audio or video, visual testimonies or photographs, they are a witness of and the re record of uh, specific events. Now, in my um, in my case, often I co I collect these uh, documents and and uh, some and for me, what's important also is is um, the minor the minor histories or the minor stories or the personal stories and the subjective ones are um, all testimonies. But together, they might um, they might. Um, form a collective memory, or if not uh, succeeding in attaining a, a complete history or a com or collective memory, at least um, at least give us give us a sense of historical processes. And um, uh, it's important to to depart from these documents. But then the work, my work as an artist is also to 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 translate them into visual elements, into plastic uh, and poetic um, elements. Thank you so much, Lenny. I think this is a very important point: the idea of uh, collecting memories, archiving, documenting something that we uh, need to do much more of, of course, everywhere in the Middle East. And I think this is a nice segue into the question I have for Hanib Al, uh, in your work as an artist, in this case, uh, you're also an educator, but as an artist, you neg negotiate the idea of memory, exile, and scars, particularly as they relate to the experience of conflict and displacement. Uh, Hanib Al, the notion of healing, however, occupies an equally important place in your practice. How do you imagine the process of restoration and what does the trajectory towards healing look like? Uh, yeah, healing is very important. Uh, I think uh, the path uh, towards healing uh, is a process 
which can take different facets. Uh, different people like react differently and uh, they have their own way. Um, it's a personal and collective endeavor, uh, finally, to achieve a certain uh, inner balance, I think. The inner balance is very important in the process. Um, with respect to uh, affected, affecting and, uh, and unsettling forces that are coming from the outside. Uh, uh, to, be, uh, to be healthy again, uh, one is forced uh, and needs to reestablish a certain equilibrium uh, from uh, within and uh, with the outside uh, what's happening. Uh, harmony is very important. Uh, and. Uh, I, in my art, uh, I mean, given these, this uh, framework, in my art, I propose fundamentally in my exhibitions of and artworks, uh, uh, even in the most chaotic compositions, there's always an inner balance in these, uh, in these artworks. And the trajectories and tension can fly all over, the, all over the place in all kinds of directions, yet there is a binding cohesiveness uh, which I propose uh, in, uh, in art in general. Thank you so much, Anita. Uh, Actually, I want to just take a couple of comments from the, from the chat. Uh, we have mm -hmm. uh, Linda Jacobs, uh, who says <coughs> the, Arab, the Arab Image Foundation does a great job at archiving. That's right, Linda. Thank you very much for, your, uh, for that comment. Uh, we also have a, uh, a question, uh, maybe more towards Hannibal uh, from uh, Ofsana Yepremian, who asks, what is the future of art and art teachers? Maybe what is the future of art teachers in <laughs> Lebanon, Hannibal? We, I mean, uh, we'll get to, I mean, the art, art, I'm teaching art online. I just finished a sculpture, 3D sculpture online. <laughs> I mean, uh, we have to be inventive, right? <laughs> How does that work? Uh, it's just an exchange with the students, uh, basically giving them instructions. Uh, if they have the material, we invent the material. Uh, we are, I mean, there are certain technical things that's frustrating we cannot uh, pass on. But uh, uh, I mean, with lots of explanation, takes three times the, three times the, the time to explain things because you have to annotate everything and but it's working, the guy, I mean, the students are very, very uh, productive and it's functioning. I mean, we have to live with the time that we are, we are in. Excellent, excellent answer. Thank you, Hanibal. Uh, let me, we have a question for you from Rene Randall, uh, who asks, uh, what is your philosophy with respect to distinguishing the political from the artistic? Uh, That's a question. <laughs> First, I want to say something uh, that personally I've used a lot of images from the Arab Image Foundation. So it was a great, uh, of course, uh, place for me to do research and to, and to be able to use them in my own personal work. Uh, it's impossible to dissociate art from politics when you live in Lebanon. Our reason uh, to do, uh, I mean, not our reason to do art, but I mean, art for me is a, very much a political territory. But um, most of my work had to do um, uh, with how to approach history and how to reflect on the Lebanese war and their aftermath. So for me, it doesn't mean to be directly political in the sense of to which party do you, you know, um, do, uh, do you consider uh, affiliated to or not. It's, it's not about this kind of politics, of course, but it's much more about a reflection on, on um, on notions of truth, on notions of history, on the fabrication of images, etc. All these things are political. But for me, I'm not necessarily militant uh, directly. So I don't think that the discourse should be necessarily um, obvious or, or directly addressing, um, addressing or, or, or being biased. For me, it's more interesting to raise the questions through the different, uh, um, through the different approaches. And, 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 and to go back to the question you asked before, something that is important about the document is precisely to have the variety of perspective that gives you the different points of view on a certain reality. Thank you so much, uh, Lamia. And uh, you touched upon this, uh, this issue just a few minutes ago, but maybe you can tell us a little bit more about how 
uh, uh, LAU and specifically the arts and design department been affected by the recent crises and what coping strategies has the institution relied on in the past year or so? Well, first of all, we had, uh, I mean, given the health situation with COVID, uh, I mean, we had to ask the students question, uh, I mean, establish questionnaires uh, just to protect everybody. I mean, they have to come to say that they are okay. They, have, they don't have fever. They don't uh, feel anything. That's one control that we do even before they get to the, to the LAU. Then afterwards, there's a whole like logistics of cleaning after each class, uh, keeping distances. We have reduced the number of students per class uh, from like 15 to 10. So just like to have two meters between classes. So it's logistically on the ground has been, uh, lots of work has been done. Uh, there has been a follow-up also on who comes, who doesn't come, and the whole thing. It's a huge uh, uh, enterprise, and I think the staff uh, and the faculty are all respecting uh, and taking care of the keeping everybody safe. This is very important. The other problem is that we are doing it, some courses, just studio courses, the courses we cannot have um, like just on online, because I mean, some courses can be done online, uh, art history lectures, but when you have manual uh, factors like uh, painting, uh, drawing, uh, design, you sometimes you need to, to, to see the students. So we're trying to make uh, time slots and uh, what, what could be done on, um, on the internet uh, through uh, WebEx, Zoom meeting or whatever, we're just uh, doing it online, it's just communicating. And right now in the lockdown anyway, we cannot go out, so we have to do it online. So we're doing even the studio online. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes, you're right. I, I Painting thought, and drawing. I never thought I would be missing this classroom environment so much. And uh, I think it's- Oh yeah. We're it's, all hoping I mean, to be uh, close with students once again. Um, let me, uh, uh, I, I said earlier that we, yet you are more than just artists or, uh, Artist actors, uh, art, art, actors in the art scene in Lebanon and the region. You yourself are the co-founder and board member of the Beirut uh, Art Center. Really goes without saying that it's one of the most, um, I think, avant-garde spaces that showed some of the most interesting exhibitions in the region over the past years. This is just a plug in. No one asked me to say this, but I follow everything that the BAC um, does uh, religiously. Um, and of course, uh, I want to ask you uh, now, it's been 11 or 12 years since BAC has been founded. What has been the road like for, uh, do you say BAC or BAC? How has the road been like? Both. The past, both. <laughs> How has the road been like the past uh, 12 years or so? And what are some of the most recent challenges uh, and crises that the center has been faced with? The, the road is rocky. <laughs> it's, uh, let's say we're never bored in Lebanon. Um, well, when we, it's, we opened Beirut Art Center in 2009, it was initiated by Sandra Darir and myself, and um, we had uh, board members, uh, the founder, the, 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 we had founders who, who, um, who collaborated with us, Maria Saimi and uh, Bassam Ahwaji and uh, Rabia Amroué, and later the board has changed to add new members, and um, what I want to say is when we created the BAC, uh, it was a necessity. We felt it was very much needed. It came out of a natural grow, uh, growing uh, art scene in the post-war time. We didn't come out of nowhere. There were associations like Ashkal Alwan, like Zico House, uh, uh, festivals like Ertijal, like Eilul festivals, artists who were working there, galleries who were working there. But there was no uh, space of, of a large scale that could propose a contemporary art program and series of events and weekly events throughout the year um, for, for the public uh, that was not a commercial gallery or foreign embassy affiliated space. Uh, so for us, it was, it seemed very clear and important. The idea was not so original. The idea was very much came out of a necessity. And then um, 
gradually the space when we opened, of course, it generated a lot of enthusiasm. And, uh, and then later, we became, I think we became quite a, an important space in, in Lebanon and the region. Um, uh, with uh, with show, featuring, of course, local uh, local artists, but also international artists, and uh, as things changed in the in the region, the market started to grow in 2007, and then things changed in the UAE, for instance, in Sharjah, mm -hmm. uh, with your foundation and with the Sh Barjil Foundation, with the Sharjah Biennale, with the, with the Dubai Art Fair. So many things changed in the region. And so many spaces also changed in Lebanon. There were new spaces opening, new initiatives. So of course, the question of, of what is our role has uh, continuously been uh, transforming. And, um, and it's, it's something that, uh, that, that we always raise as an issue. What is, what is our role? Do we continue as we started? Do we question ourselves? Of course, today, um, Another, another thing happened, uh, and we'll come back to it, that uh, many, uh, um, uh, many, many spaces are in, in this position of fragility because of the economical crisis in Lebanon. Uh, are, uh, small uh, spaces like, uh, like associations that are non-for-profit, like Beirut Art Center, are in a very fragile situation. But also, um, the financial and the financial collapse, of course, makes the everyday life very difficult, uh, even in terms of practical uh, practical matters. But um, we'll go back to it maybe later. Also, the blast has affected and transformed uh, the whole uh, cultural landscape in in Lebanon. Um, all that to say, mainly as a, a places like uh, like Sursa Museum and galleries in 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 Jemaze were destroyed. Maybe we'll go back later to that. But how? Um, so again, our place, uh, the place of of such of of, 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 of uh, like Beirut Art Center is, is 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 still relevant because there is a lack of space and because there is very much a need. For, for for art and culture to, to prevail, but they are in danger and there are still questions today. And so the question of how to continue is, uh, is important. Today, we left the direction, Sandra and I, uh, in 2014. We wanted this institution to go beyond um, our persons and uh, to, to, to be an institution that could continue its mission and question its mission with a new vision and as of 2020, uh, new, two new, new directors, uh, Haig Abazian and Ahmad Hussein, were appointed. But uh, frankly, uh, it's been very difficult uh, to operate, like I said, during the financial and, and economical crisis, but also with, amidst the uprising and then the COVID and then the COVID and then the blast. So many things happened that made their program and made the center um, really uh, in a different space. Uh, so the center was closed for one year after October 17. It reopened only for a few days because of the pandemic and then it closed again. And um, after the blast for two months, the center was a space that of support for NGO of relief. So it stored uh, food boxes and material for construction to help other NGO do their relief work. And uh, now in November, a new show, uh, a, a, sh a new show opened, but it was closed right after due to the pandemic. So the future is uncertain. People uh, were fighting for its existence. Uh, what can I say? As you uh, you mentioned, uh, let me all these things, and it reminded me of an American saying: "A perfect storm." All these different elements coming together at the same time. So, uh, and I also uh, want to say that. You mentioned all these events taking place in the UAE, and I always remind myself that the art scene in the UAE is so much, um, uh, you know, uh, reliant in a way and uh, benefiting from what's happening in Lebanon in terms of artistic creativity. So many of the artists, so much of the whatever's being produced in Lebanon is being shown in the UAE. So I always want to remind us that there is a mutually beneficial relationship here between Lebanon and, and the, yes. the region, maybe especially the UAE, but other parts 
of the region as well. And maybe that is why we should definitely think about supporting the art scene in, in Lebanon and Beirut and elsewhere. So um, I think, wow, I have so many questions for you. I just don't even know to pick questions from the, from the chat or from the Q&A, the questions I have prepared. Uh, but maybe, um, maybe Hanib Al, uh, there's a question from uh, Ralf Haj who says, in the view of the economic collapse, do you think paid art programs like the LAUs will survive? Uh, the, the university is yes, paying university? Yes, paying, uh, paying I didn't understand programs. the question. Yes. Ah, paying programs, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think the LAU is uh, asking, I mean, we, uh, we're doing lots of um, uh, work. We're having an exhibition for art, selling art to raise funds to help students, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, paying institutions, I mean, the university has a certain cost at a certain point. Uh, minimum cost, we're trying, I mean, we're cutting down on costs as, as much as possible. Uh, there is uh, some aid that comes from uh, grants to universities that in our situation, uh, from the US and from other, uh, mainly, and from other sources. Uh, but at the same time, the, the situation is that the students pay the, the functionality of the, of the, I mean, the tuition fees, is relative to what we have as expenses, it's uh, it just barely covers. Uh, and I think we had some aid, like the, the both universities, both American universities this year, they had aid from the $10 million, I think from the US, the government directly. So all this is coming to, and uh, I think the French uh, government is also supporting French schools. So it's not only a US thing. So uh, each country is sort of like contributing for its language to survive and its culture somehow. So we are somehow related. Uh, and I, I hope that uh, for education, the, it continues, the help continues. So uh, it is true that it is dangerous. We are, we are in a very delicate situation. Uh, without this help, probably we, we will be in a big trouble. So Haniba uh, and Lamia, maybe I can begin with Lamia here. I have a nice question from Reem Najjar, who says, I admire your work, both of you, of course, and I am also amazed by your strength, especially in these difficult times. What keeps you going? What inspires you, Lamia? Uh, what keeps me going? Uh, well, life itself. I'm very curious about life, and so I guess this is what keeps me going. Uh, frankly, I haven't produced any artwork in a year. Uh, more than a year. I think I was overwhelmed by the events. And now I was lucky to be granted a fellowship by Columbia University in Paris. So I'm, I'm really proud and happy to, to, to be able to do this and to reconnect with my work. Uh, so what keeps me going, I guess, is um, the warmth of the people that I love, my love for, for my city, Beirut, and, uh, and life itself, like I said. Fantastic. Hanibal, what keeps you going? What inspires you? Oh, uh, I think uh, uh, having contact with the young people and uh, like and in school by teaching, uh, I see their enthusiasm and that gives me uh, lots of energy to continue. At the same time, for me, art is a kind of a healing, like we were talking about healing. Uh, it's a process. It's a process that sort of also keeps us uh, working and uh, needing to to always uh, rethink the rethink reality, questioning. So it's a constant research for me in general. Okay, so I, I think now it's mid midway through the talk. Uh, maybe it's a good time for me to introduce uh, another element that I wanted to share with you. Of course, we are all here to think about the uh, effect that the the crises have had on the art scene, but also I wanted to share with you that uh, there is an auction on the 18th of February in collaboration between the Lebanese American University uh, and art groups and includes uh, works donated by members of the LAU community, including Eli Saab, uh, Muna Hatoum, uh, Shawqi Shukini, and so many others, some of whom are uh, graduates, some of whom are uh, faculty. If you allow me just to uh, share with you this uh, lovely catalog that was produced, <clears throat> this will only take um, 30 seconds or so. So this is an auction taking place live February 18th, and the proceeds, of course, go to support the university. It's for a good cause. Uh, we will make sure that there is a link. Please, Albert, if you can 
post the link for people to take a look. Uh, some lovely pieces here, uh, such as these uh, works by Muna Hatoum, who I believe is an uh, alumnus of the university, if I'm not mistaken. And we also have a familiar name here, Hanib Al Suruji. <laughs> I see that you've also donated uh, an artwork. Maybe just tell us a little bit about this piece. Uh, yeah, this piece is, uh, is from a series that I did after the attack on the uh, in 2001, 9-11, after the attack on the World Trade Center centers. Um, at the time, uh, I mean, I was affected too because uh, I belonged to a association that was on the 92nd floor of the left tower. And we had work there. And uh, I mean, my friends, luckily my friends were not in. And uh, we lost everything in 2001 also like so part of me also went in flames uh, that day so uh, it's a series of homage to all the explosions and again we have this explosion in Beirut again so it's uh, kind of uh, haunting me everywhere <laughs> uh, but I, what I'm trying to establish in this series is more like harmony uh, not violence just like more uh, equilibrium and uh, sort of like talking about things, but in a positive way. Fantastic. I'll just uh, quickly scroll down to a couple of other works. So you guys, of course, have the opportunity, uh, some works that you can pick up. Again, proceeds go for a good cause. So I'll stop sharing my screen now and uh, no more plugins. Uh, we can go back to the conversation. Uh, I'm gonna pick a, a, qu a question. Um, oh, so Mohammed Sukkar, uh, says, how can we participate as uh, graduates? So uh, maybe this is uh, why we have uh, Hanib Al. Can you tell us how can graduates support the well, university? They, as, a, if, an, as an alumni, as an alumni, of course, they can contact uh, uh, the LAU and uh, we'll look at the work and see what we can do. Contact yes. me too. Okay, so Thank contact Hanib Al, you can contact Nadia, Nadim, contact me. We're all here to support LAU in any way possible. Uh, the same was from Christian um, uh, Mushbahani as well. Thank you all for, uh, for yes. uh, volunteering to support. Um, Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Lemia, there's a question from Christine Donnelly who says, how can people outside of Beirut work in solidarity with artists and organizations to support efforts uh, um, in Lebanon? To support artists directly? Uh, yes, artists or initiatives. Initiatives, well, each, uh, each, uh, each, uh, each spaces or museums or have their own website and they can support by giving to these institutions. Uh, artists directly, we would have to have the name of, I mean, the list of names of artists specifically. I think it would be more complicated. There were, um, after the blast, there were relief funds uh, and solidarity funds created by Afak and Al Maurid al Sakafi towards, um, and there were also international funds that supported either uh, through a list of artists that was given to them or people who had their studio damage or people, because the blast has, uh, one has to, to say to people who are not living in Lebanon that the blast has destroyed an area where a lot of artists uh, lived and worked and where a lot of um, a lot of uh, galleries also such as Tanid Gallery and Marfa Gallery uh, uh, and the Mrabrab Gallery were, destro were destroyed and of course the Sursuk Museum was entirely destroyed etc. So I think directly to this institution for art for I mean for uh, there is no uh, uh, I mean there is no um, collective of artists uh, in the, that would uh, that, that cre is created to, to, to accept uh, individual grants. So that is a more tricky question. Okay. But, um, Thank you. Uh, Hannibal, would you like to take a, a, a try to answer that question or? Uh, I mean, the, we had a few events uh, uh, like uh, Art House, we had an event, a set, like I mean, a show, some artists. About 50 artists gave work to support the Red Cross at the time. But, uh, and even uh, we had a show at Christie's, we had a sale at Christie's uh, London to raise money for that, for that cause. But uh, I mean, to help 
artists, I think the, the best thing is to connect with associations. Mm -hmm. uh, the museum needs help. <laughs> so, so museum needs help. All the, any, if the person wants to help, they could look at the sites of artists and contact them and associations too. It would be my best. Thank you. Yes, and, the, and your help can go to any institution in Lebanon because everyone benefits. Uh, so uh, please uh, do suggest to your friends as well yes. to support. Uh, there's a question from uh, very patient Alexandra Filatova who asked in the very, very beginning, uh, what, is your what, is, what in your opinion art plays in Lebanese society as a medium or language to respond to current events, namely social movements? Do you think art is inclusive or exclusive for some groups in Lebanon? Does it build common language and platform for discussion or divide? So it's a long question, but um, wow. <laughs> would, would, would either of you like to, uh, to answer that? Uh, uh, Lemia, do you think art is inclu inclusive or exclusive? Um, well, some people think it's inclusive, others think it's exclusive. Uh, <laughs> what can I say? It's, uh, I mean, the role of art uh, was, like I said, questioned recently, especially, especially after the uprising, there were everything that, um, uh, ev everything was uh, questioned. And uh, art institution who seemed to be also established were questioned. And the role of art was questioned even by, even by ourselves, artists. Apologies. <laughs> It went through my computer. I don't know how. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, and um, so, for, for but the important thing is, um, I think the, the abuses also of the art market and the speculation um, really made a very. Uh, I mean, I think it it led to a lot of uh, people to think that art is an elitist place, that art is is something that is uh, is not for everyone, etc. Which, uh, of course, I mean. It can I mean it can be understood, but I personally I personally disagree. I think it's it's everyone's effort also um, to make it uh, to make it uh, available. Uh, but I, I I don't contest that it's a reality that sometimes art can be that way and, and can be felt that that way. Uh, I don't know if it answers the question. Um, uh, did you want to add anything to that? I think uh, art uh, is like it's an invitation. To, uh, to, a, to a journey, uh, it's not answers to concrete things. It's a, I think art evokes the questions more than giving answers. Uh, so if uh, people want, are uh, looking for specific answers, uh, I think they should read the newspaper. Uh, uh, art is sort of like uh, something that offers a, a journey into the invisible, making things visible and emotion, emotional encounters. I think uh, art is an experience, finally. It's not something concrete. It's, it is concrete, but it's an experience that goes through the emotion and the understanding. Uh, so it's not something I can give you. I wish I could just give them to, to people, give it to people. <laughs> Thank you, Hannibal. And uh, Lemia, it really makes me wish I was a student in both of your uh, classes or lectures. Uh, but uh, now with Zoom, this is possibly a, something that can happen. Uh, I also want to thank the 100 people who have joined us on this talk. So it's a wonderful number. Very excited to have you all. Uh, I will now uh, dip into the Q&A and ask, take a question from Sarah, who asks uh, Lemia, what, are the what, what is the mission of artists after uh, the explosion in Beirut? And what are the initiatives you are thinking to do, especially at uh, the back? Um, so uh, I think artists, after the blast, uh, many artists, architects um, helped personally through different ways, each in their own ways. Some people helped by rebuilding houses, uh, uh, some people volunteer, etc. Other by by donating work, like Hannibal was uh, was saying, um, etc. Um, but um, these are individuals. There is um, 
I'm sure also that a lot of artists are meeting constantly to think about what to do. Uh, like I said, after the uprising, even way before the blast, there were many groups of artists meeting to, to think about what to do and how to change the course of things and how to maybe make things better for the condition of working uh, for artists in, in, in Lebanon. Now, like I said earlier, uh, back after the blast was, Bas ha back had minor damages compared to other uh, uh, maybe institutions who were in the area of the, of the blast, but it, it had minor damage that it quickly rebuilt. And therefore it was able to give it space for a few months to other association in need of uh, distributing food boxes or material uh, of constructions. But, um, after much questioning, uh, the directors chose, of course, to continue their program that was very much impaired by the, by the, by the uprising, by the COVID pandemic, and uh, by the blast. So now uh, it's very important to regain uh, the, 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 uh, the, and persevere in our own field, which is, which is to continue to show art and to continue. So they did a lot of things, uh, the new directors did a lot of things online, but they will continue to work on different, uh, different shows. So uh, the show when it opened, because of the pandemic, there were a limited amount of people that were allowed to come in, of course, with all the me COVID measures, uh, etc. I, as board member, I do not participate in the artistic, uh, uh, we, we, we don't participate in the artistic uh, direction of the center, but we support, uh, we support the directors. So I think it's really important to simply to persevere and support because an art institution, uh, by continuing, also support uh, artists and the life of artists and their production. And this is something um, major. If anything, what Lebanon is missing um, for the past decades is, is, is to support the production of artists and to su support their, them uh, daily. And I think it's the role of institutions, but uh, uh, such as uh, art spaces, but also uh, universities that could potentially have experimental labs uh, and, and places of research uh, designed to help artists. So, I mean, uh, there are there are um, there are many things that one can think of, but today the political climate and the economical crisis make things very difficult. So today people are very concerned about practical issues uh, more than anything. Yes, you're right. Uh, I also want to say that we were all in the region inspired by how the Lebanese, not only the arts community, but the Lebanese community at large, reacted to the blast uh, six months ago today. Uh, a lot of people went down the street, uh, started cleaning, picking up uh, shards of glass. I mean, it was very, very emotional for me to watch some videos really brought tears to my eyes. The love that the Lebanese have for their country, for their city, for, the, for each other is something that was so evident that day. And I think that uh, it's just, just so moving. And I think this is the spirit that will make sure that uh, Lebanon continues to uh, persevere. Uh, thanks to Albert uh, Dumar for uh, placing a link uh, to the catalog, and yes, uh, Tariq uh, Abu Saleh, it is a beautiful, uh, fascinating catalog. Um, and uh, to go back to Hannibal now, Hannibal, you've taught in yes. several universities right now, you're at LAU, who are hosting us yes. uh, today. Uh, my question is, how is student engagement with the wider artistic community in Lebanon important, and what could be done to support and enhance the student engagement? Oh, yeah, the students, are like, I mean, the, the students are the future. Of course, they are very important. Uh, I mean, we have to support them. I mean, not only teaching them, but also introducing them uh, to the logistics of uh, what can we do with art. I mean, uh, art is a very wide uh, range uh, from, goes from illustration, design to uh, expression, self-expression. Uh, the, the, there is uh, always a demand for, uh, I mean, there, there have been some uh, support also for young galleries uh, by uh, FFA Bank, I think, uh, to open, they opened a small gallery so art, young people can expose and I mean, have exhibitions. Um, there's lots of uh, support for the 
uh, that, I mean, it used to, now everything is closed, unfortunately, because of the situation, but there is lots of uh, support. And I personally always encouraging and trying to introduce, and our students, I mean, already, uh, they're, they're in, in international uh, competitions, they're gaining uh, prizes, they're having recognition. Uh, I think the education we're giving them is good enough to uh, give, put them on the right track, and this is the most important thing. Excellent. Actually, I, I'm really impressed and touched by some of the uh, uh, comments from uh, the LAU uh, alumni. Uh, we have uh, a few who have uh, asked how they can support, and now we have uh, Sarah Mekki who says, how can I contact you to donate artwork as an alumni? So thank you so much, Sarah Mekki. This is the kind of spirit that we appreciate, uh, and I think from all alumni, especially at uh, LAU. Uh, so thank you so much to Sarah and, uh, and the others as well. Uh, going uh, back uh, to Lemia, Lemia, I mean, Lebanon is, is unique in the sense that it has a very active political climate. Um, so my question is, what are the synergies, if any exist, were you able to observe between Lebanon's artists and its activists encountering and responding to the recent crises? Uh, frankly, it's a, it's, it's a difficult question because uh, most, uh, many artists are already activists themselves. Uh, not all, of course, but many are, are already activists, so they don't uh, separate this. Um, I know for a fact that um, uh, there's a group uh, uh, of artists after the, uh, following the uprising of October 17 that uh, uh, decided to meet regularly, for instance, to discuss uh, uh, the relation between, of course, uh, uh, um, the transformation of the conditions of art, uh, 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 of art, of the field of art, and 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 working in the field of art in Lebanon, and uh, and possibly creating different uh, different groups uh, uh, to act. Uh, politically, but uh, to act politically on in the field of art. Uh, to say that these conversations have led to anything tangible or to anything, it's hard, it will take time. But, uh, and of course there are people who uh, on the contrary isolated themselves and, uh, and didn't want to take part into anything. But most, many artists took part in the, in the in the uprising, and many artists are consider themselves also activists, uh, taking part in campaign like uh, I don't know, like the Bisri campaign, the campaign for the Bisri Valley, or or um, various campaign, and of course uh, campaigns uh, of relief uh, for the uh, uh, post blast. So these are the synergies. I think the synergies are already existing. Um, there are lots of conversation, but I can also say that artists were overwhelmed and uh, and uh, like I said earlier, their their everyday life was destroyed because the, the many galleries were destroyed or, or personally affected by by the blast and uh, and 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 museum and spaces and artists themselves saw their life destroyed and their studios and therefore uh, this demand a certain distance, it's very hard to um, to go back to normal or to go back to, to, to work uh, after that. And, and maybe we shouldn't, they should, artists shouldn't. There is a, they, there, this is also a political uh, position. Some people don't want to, don't want to, to do as if uh, nothing happened and they shouldn't do as if nothing happened. So, 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 the, 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 the idea is that uh, the blast is something, is there is a before and after the blast. And, and uh, so it will take a lot of time for many people, many artists to, um, to uh, gather uh, their effort and, uh, and to create something out of these syn synergies, I think. Thank you, thank you so much, Lamia. Actually, we're entering the final 10 minutes or the final few minutes of this uh, conversation. Thank you all for staying with us. Uh, Tarek uh, Abu Saleh is insisting on this question, so I don't want to feel like uh, I'm ignoring him. And I don't know if either of our panelists can answer this question. But he asks, is there any plan to erect a monument in Beirut to commemorate the martyrs of the explosion of Beirut port? I'm not sure if anyone can answer this here. But uh, you know of any I, can, I can answer the question. Okay. Uh, there has been uh, like Future Plus. Uh, it's a group, uh, I think, uh, based in uh, in the Emirates, 
They have launched a uh, monument uh, and some of our students uh, have participated in giving ideas for a monument. So there are a few um, monuments like seriously, but I have not uh, heard uh, the, I mean, it's, 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 it's happening. Uh, but I think the idea of monument is not, it's, it's what is it, what is it that we, we want to need? We need probably a space for people to think about what happened. And the space is in the minds of people between us, what we're doing it on the, uh, I mean, we're, we're creating today a certain monument because we're still talking about the, the, the event. Uh, I think it's very important to keep the event alive and to uh, think of all the people who suffered and injured and get killed. And it's, a, it's, a, it's a, building a monument on its own, it's not, it's an object. Uh, it's, I think it's uh, the thinking and the people who are more important. Yeah, that's right, thank you. Well, very well said, Hannibal. Okay, so everybody, I have a very loaded question, but I think this question really is the crux of this conversation. And uh, we want to think about solutions. We want to think about what can be done. So my question is this, uh, to both of you, Lamia and Hannibal, what are some of the actionable steps that you think can be taken by individuals, institutions, investors, international collaborators, or other groups uh, in moving Lebanon's artistic ecosystem towards greater stability? So I'm thinking about the role of the international community oh. outside Lebanon, but also, what are some of the conversations that we should be having and who do you think should be participating in these dialogues? Okay, I think everyone, everyone that is a cultural practitioner or that loves art and culture should participate in the conversation. Uh, I also think there are many ways, uh, there are many ideas on how to help or how to create an ecosystem that is viable. It demands, of course, uh, time and uh, and financial support, but for I I think I've been saying this for a few decades that I think that a production fund to support artists is important. Right now, there is in the region one fund which is Afak, and their fund is great, but it supports uh, all the Arab world. Mm -hmm. It's not enough. Considering Lebanon has a very vibrant artistic scene, it's not enough. We need a production fund to support artists. Um, Artists can be supported by doing residencies uh, or different, uh, different residencies. Um, another way is also um, by creating, like I said, maybe making universities, giving the means within university, doing postgraduate fellowship, creating labs in universities, like you have scientific labs, why not an artistic lab? Like that can be a research place for artists that can develop work um, you know, maybe right after school without having to depend on the market, something that is very important. And um, another point is to support the, inst the institutions that are fragile. Uh, that's also another possibility. And then uh, uh, finally, something very important is to support the ecosystem, which are all the craftsmen and people who are working in the different fields around uh, the, uh, the artists who are people who make the frame, people who do metal work, carpenters, all these people are threatened because they are their work is growing uh, side by side with the artist. And today, if there is no art production and no artistic, um, I mean, it took us 20 years to be able to do certain kind of printing uh, for, in Lebanon, to do a certain kind of framing, certain, mm -hmm. and now it's, dis it's gonna disappear because there is very little production and these professions are also in danger. So there are so many ways uh, to help uh, for anyone who is interested in brainstorming, contact me and uh, we can continue this conversation. It's endless. How can, how can they contact you, uh, Levnia? Uh, through my uh, website, lamiajoresh.com. Excellent. I mean, excellent. There are also the, 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 the institutions exist, the universities exist. Uh, I think uh, uh, it's important that, that the community continues in this conversation. Okay, that, I second that. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. We should that. all join yeah. efforts in this sense, I think. I think we, all, we should all join, join efforts in this sense, just to have like an inter, inter, like interaction. It's a, a community thing. It's very important. Yeah, I mean, I know. I mean, I, I, when I'm when I'm working in my studio, I have many people dependent on my production. When I'm not, they, they sort of like, 
I mean, helpers, assistants, uh, carpenters, like Lamia said, and printers, uh, everybody. It's a, uh, it's a micro economy. Actually, the art, what, what people should understand that art is a, is, a, uh, is, a, is a business column in the economy. It's a, it's a real important, I mean, in France, it's, it's one of the columns of the economy that uh, happens. And it can generate money. It's not only needs money, it can generate money eventually. That's right. Uh, we've seen uh, Hani Baal uh, and Lamia the, the role that the culture, the cultural field or the cultural sector plays in economies of cities like uh, London and Paris and New York. And of course, this is a role that it can easily play in Beirut, uh, one of the most vibrant cities uh, in the world. There's a, a couple of questions that uh, I didn't ignore, but I felt like they were not relevant to the conversation today. So my apologies to these individuals. I also see that uh, the boss of the conversation, Nadia Baghdashi, is back, which means that <laughs> I'll be taking a step back in a couple of minutes. But uh, I want to say, first of all, thank you so much to uh, Hanib Al, uh, Suruji, and Lamia Jurej. I must say, I am so touched and thank so, uh, and so I, I learned so much from this past hour from both of you. And uh, Hanib Al, I'm going to sign up for your class uh, once I'm allowed to go back <laughs> to Lebanon. <laughs> Please. Anytime. <laughs> Thank you so much. And to everybody attending, by the way, don't leave yet because we have Nadia coming with very important uh, points to make, but uh, please make sure that you copy the link of the uh, catalog to the auction uh, before you leave the conversation. There's some really beautiful artworks. I know I'm bidding on maybe at one or two, but I won't tell you which ones. So uh, Nadia, I think the floor is yours. So go ahead. Unmute yourself. Nadia, please uh, unmute yeah, Nadia. Unmute. There you go. Sultan, thank you so much for, uh, for guiding this, uh, this very uh, interesting conversation. I know I was listening to Hannibal and to Lamia and I've learned so much. And I was, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm feeling a little emotional when I think of, uh, of what everything that's happening uh, in Lebanon today. Um, I think a lot to take in. But uh, Lamia and Hannibal, thank you for participating with us. Uh, I learned a lot. And for our, our alumni who are tuning in, I just wanted to say, I believe Albert uh, sent my email in the chat, I think the chat box. So you can contact me directly if you're interested in uh, contributing to the art auction that will uh, go live soon on the Arts Group's website, as you said, Sultan. And all proceeds will benefit directly uh, students uh, under the LAU's Emergency Student Financial Aid Fund. So, um, and we'll have more information on that later. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who tuned in with us today. Hannibal Lamia, good to see you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.